All right, so this reverb is sounding good on the snare drum. I've lowered the channel, the snare reverb return channel, and I'm just using the factory default here with a few simple settings. And I want to save this. So I'm going to go into the preset manager browser here, and we have two broad categories, factory presets and user presets. We can step backwards and forwards to them. So within the user presets folder, I want to click this new button, and it's bringing up the new preset window. Let me just resize this, and I'm going to quickly give it a name. And you'll notice the pathway. It's saving it to the documents folder within my user folder, and then within documents, isotope, equinox, presets, and that's where I'm going to put it. So now I've got my first user preset, and I can step back and go to the factory presets, view those, step back, and now go to the user presets and view those. Now we've got the familiar rename, update, and delete buttons here for user presets, but let's go to the factory presets and browse some of these. Now we can use these tags for tag-based browsing. Maybe I want to go for a room, and I want to go for drums, and I want to go for something small. So it's giving me a subset of what's available that suits or that's tagged with those tags. Let's try that one just for fun. Try another one. So they all sound nice and cohesive and blend in nicely with the overall drum groove. You can view multiple tags from the same category, but let's say I'm going to view medium instead of small. Now I'm getting just one result returned. Very different. Now I can use this to clear all the tags and maybe I want to view chamber and drums and now I'm getting some other results. A little heavier sounding. Now let's say I'm going to go back to my user presets and I'm going to select my user preset. I'm going to clear the filters and I want to give it some tags. So I'm going to click the tag button and I can adjust what I want. I'm going to go with room because that's kind of what it suggests to me, even though I have it set to chamber. And I'm going to go to small, even though it's a couple of seconds, it's got a small feel because of the size. And I can continue tagging it as I want. I'm going to tag it with drums and I'm just going to give it those tags. So now if I tag let's say, or search rather drums in my user folder, it's going to come up. But if I search for, let's say, keys, it's not going to come up because it's not tagged with that. So now I'm back to where I started. Great. So very intuitive use of the presets and filters. And we can always step through next and previous with these. And of course, that's not going to be relevant since there's only one in the user folder. But without that open, we can do that and just step through linearly. Now, we also have support for the Symphony and Stratus plugins from Exponential Audio. So you can turn that on. And when you do that, you're now going to see all of the presets that were available from those plugins. So this opens things up way further. So now let's say I'm going to search room, small drums. I'm getting a lot more results. Maybe I'm going to go for retro. Now it's really limited my results. But really great to have these available. And I can filter out and have just the Symphony results or just the Stratus results, or both. But let's say I'm going to go with experimental. Really interesting rhythm in the tail there. But the idea is that with this enabled, you get all kinds of additional presets that originated from those two plugins. Now, you can also import any custom presets you may have saved with your Symphony and Stratus plugins. And you do that by going to the Options menu. And here you've got this Migrate Legacy Preset button, which brings up your file selector. And here's where they're located on your hard drive for Mac users in your user folder in library, application support, exponential audio, Stratus and user, or Symphony and user. And this is the pathway for Windows in your user folder, app data, roaming, exponential audio, Stratus, user, and Symphony user. And when you are importing these presets, one known issue, there's incorrect width values for the tail width and early width in Symphony only. So you need to adjust those and then resave them. And a special note for Pro Tools users, you can have Equinox automatically replace your existing Symphony and Stratus plugins by doing the following. Move your Stratus or Symphony plugins to the unused AAX plugins folder. And this is where you're located on Mac, Library, Application Support, Avid, 
audio plugins, and there'll be an unused folder. And on Windows, in your program files directory, common files, Avid, audio, plugins, and then the unused folder. So once you've moved those away, install Equinox, and you can install it before or after you do this. It doesn't matter. Load in your new copy of your Pro Tools files. And I say new because you should back up any existing projects before you do this, just as a fail-safe safety net. So load in your copy of Pro Tools, and it'll automatically replace the Stratus and or Symphony plugins with Equinox. And if you decide you want to go back to using Stratus or, or Symphony, you can disable this automatic replacement behavior by moving Stratus and Symphony back into the active AAX plugin directory and reloading your original project file. But once Stratus and Symphony instances have been replaced and the project has been saved, you can't reverse the process. So that's why it's important to save a backup version of your Pro Tools session. We'll start digging under the hood in the next video.